So despite having Gretzky on the Kings, they couldn't get a championship in Los Angeles with Gretzky um, and Robitaille. Tell me now about skip forward many years to 2012 and 2014 when the Kings did finally get the Stanley Cup. Well, the 2012 season, midway through that year, we fired the coach, hired Daryl Sutter. We weren't having a great season. And we were talking, uh, the broadcasters and writers, it doesn't look like we're going to make the playoffs. And we did squeak in the number eight seed, the last seed to get in, and then raced through the Stanley Cup series unbelievably. Had a 3 nothing lead in all four rounds of the Stanley Cup. And it was the first number eight seed to win the Stanley Cup. It still is that. No, no number eight team has ever moved in and, and won the Stanley Cup. And they did it in such a, a dominating fashion that we couldn't believe what was happening. And I still wonder, what happened in that couple of months of the Stanley Cup preliminaries and finals that allowed this team to play that way and be so successful? And uh, uh, the fans just couldn't believe it. Of course, we sold out uh, every game, and, and uh, the excitement was there. And it went on to dominate the uh, uh, New Jersey Devils in the Stanley Cup Finals and winning four games to two and winning the final game uh, in the, the Stanley Cup Final 6-1 to one over uh, New Jersey. And it was, uh, it was amazing because there, there was such excitement around the forum and in the city about uh, the Kings, the way they had played in the three previous rounds and then in the final and everybody thinking, you know, we've got the Stanley Cup. And the, the great part about it, I think, was for the fans to, to see it, we had such a big lead with about three or four minutes to go. You knew we were going to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And they just could cheer and scream and holler and my partner on TV, Jim Fox, who played for the Kings for 10 years, and he and I were together on TV for 27, is really superstitious. So with like three minutes to go, the fans at Staples Center are chanting, we've got the cup, we've got the cup. And Jimmy's saying, no, no, don't <laughs> say that, don't say that. Uh, so when we win it, you know, it was, uh, I mean, I look over and Jimmy's crying and and fans in the stands are crying and people who thought, and me included, I'll never see this happen. And there it was happening in front of us. And uh, the parade downtown with 300,000 people, the parade in the South Bay where a lot of the players live and they saw people they do business with all the time. They really love that smaller parade. But uh, the whole atmosphere around it was, was just exciting for everyone. We have a Stanley Cup party, and the only entertainment you need is the Stanley Cup. You don't need anything else. To see the look on people's faces when they come into that room and see the Stanley Cup, and they would say to me, can I touch this? And I said, yeah, you can touch it. Can I hug it? I said, yeah, you can hug it. Can I kiss it? I said, yeah, we're giving free tetanus shots in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is – such a legacy of the Stanley Cup that it is available to the fans. They can have their picture taken with it. When we won it in uh, L.A., it went to about 500 different uh, places in L.A. that are known and had the picture of the cup in front of the Hollywood Bowl and Dodger Stadium. and uh, uh, Every landmark, over. basically, in Los Angeles. Yeah, Hollywood yeah. Boulevard and uh -huh. all over the Stanley Cup, and fans were invited to parties and, and got to, to mingle with it and have their picture taken with it. And I don't think any other professional trophy is available to the fans that way. So I'm going to hold you on one second because I'm going to preface a couple of things. I want to quickly just jump back to the 2014 championship, and then I'm going to talk about the Cup and your day with the Cup and okay. what it signifies. So – um, you know, you had mentioned in 2012 how, you know, the Devils were beaten by the Kings. 
how was it different in 2014 when the Kings were on those like seven game streaks? It felt yeah. like they just were playing game seven all the time in the playoffs. It was nerve wracking. And it's the way players said, this is the way we thought it should be. Not the way when we won it two years ago, when we ran through the playoffs and it was relatively easy. Uh, it wasn't easy, but it seemed easy because they had such a lead in 2014. Uh, we got down in a series to San Jose, three games to none. Mm. And it looked like, well, that's the end of this run. And the Kings won four straight to become only the fourth team in the history of the league to come from three games to nothing to win that series and move on. And then won in overtime against the, uh, well, then won a seven game series against Anaheim. Mm. Then won a seven-game series against Arizona, winning in overtime. And then – Well, actually, wasn't it the Blackhawks? Well, yeah. Yeah, it was the Blackhawks. Blackhawks, uh, seven yeah. Against the Blackhawks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Arizona was the, the 2012. I get, them, I get them mixed up as I try to remember uh, the series. The, the game seven against the Blackhawks to go to the Stanley Cup final with game seven in Chicago and we got to Chicago and the atmosphere there was you're, you're not going to beat the Blackhawks on their home ice in game seven. And they were, the fans there were so confident and everything. And the Blackhawks got off to a two nothing lead. And I thought maybe this is it. And then the Kings tied it. The Blackhawks went ahead three, two, and the Kings tied it. Blackhawks, and I thought, oh, every time we come back and tie it, the Blackhawks take the lead, and it seems destiny that, that they're going to win it. But in overtime, Alec Martinez gets a shot from the left point. It glances off the shoulder of a Blackhawk defenseman and into the net, and the Kings win it. And I have never been in an arena where you talk about the air going out of a building. There was dead silence as those fans in Chicago could not believe that they got beat in game seven in their own building. And, uh, uh, and of course, we we're all jumping around and screaming and hollering. And, and uh, the fans in Chicago are leaving the building in a hurry, you know. They did stick around to see the Kings <coughs> get the trophy for winning the Western the, the conference. And that's when the, most players won't touch that trophy because that's not the one they want. It's the Stanley Cup. And they think it's a jinx if you touch uh, the, the trophy that's given to the Western or Eastern Conference champion. But the fans in the stands are still there when Dustin Brown came out and the fans were hollering, touch it, pick it up, Dustin, touch it. They're trying to jinx us because we beat them. And uh, Dustin didn't touch it. But uh, it was tremendously exciting there to then and then go on and play the New York Rangers. And we yeah. got into overtimes, double overtimes with the Rangers and still won that series four games to one. So to that was my first Stanley Cup. And uh, I was working also in Staples Center and I got to see that moment when they won. And it for me too was miraculous. It, it just, I could not Imagine if that building could have gotten any louder. <laughs> oh. And then to see them skating on the ice with the cup afterwards, I mean, it was such a spectacular moment. Um, I, mean, I think it was shocking to most fans and to me that we won the cup in, in 2012. And I said to my wife, are we going to go to every Stanley Cup party? And she said, sure. We may never see this again. Well, two years later, we see it again. and win two cups in three years when we had gone 49 years or something like that without winning a Stanley Cup. And uh, uh, so it was so exciting. And like I say, that series against the Rangers, we, we dominated the series, but the games were close. And uh, uh, that last game there went into double overtime and a, a shot by- It was stressful. It was stressful. <laughs> yeah. And a shot by Toffoli that is saved by Henrik Lundqvist, the Ranger goalie, but the rebound came right out on the left wing to the stick of Alec Martinez, Man. and he scores the game-winning goal. So uh, 
you know, he scored a couple of game-winning goals in those Stanley Cup series. Uh, I think first player in, in that one series to win the, the series that sends you to the Stanley Cup, a game against Chicago, and then get the game winner in the Stanley Cup. And, uh, and he had what they call jazz hands. He was looking for somebody to <laughs> congratulate. He didn't know what to do. His hands were, were flipping around. But uh, uh, just so great to remember those feelings that all the fans had and uh, all of us had in the Kings organization. You know, when you win the Stanley Cup as a player, you have a day with the Cup. And I know that you actually had on both wins when the Kings won your day with the Cup. So could you kind of elaborate what you did on those days? Yeah, we had about four hours with it. All the announcers with the Kings got four hours with the Cup. We didn't get a whole day. Four hours was enough. We had, I think we had about 150 people come to uh, a, uh, a country club in L.A. and had the cup there. And that was another scene where all the, even the, the staff at the country club would walk through and, oh, can I get a picture with a cup? Can I get a picture? And, uh, and we had so many uh, people there that were just marveling and getting their picture taken because there was the Stanley Cup. And, uh, and then two years later, we had it at another facility that was another a golf course facility and uh, had so many people again. We were, we were thinking we'd, the first cup we'd have at our house. And when, this, when the guest list got to about <laughs> like, 75, no, we said, I don't think if we can get that many in here. So we, we had it at those country clubs. But uh, uh, it, it was just the amazing feeling of seeing those fans. And the, the other great thing about it is the players do get it for a, for a day and take it, and the cup goes to where they live. It mm -hmm. might be Russia, it might be Finland, Sweden, Canada, the U.S., and they can take it wherever they want to take it um, within reason. They can take it to their rink where they started playing hockey as a youngster, take it to hospitals, take it to convalescent homes, and, uh, and just share it with all of the fans that, uh, that are thrilled having a chance to be around the Stanley Cup.